living here, it's crazy to hear it. And then if you're out of the country knowing that another country is eating all this stuff, but you're safe, that must be incredibly entertaining as well. Like very enlightening and puts you at ease on the other side of things. So it's just good if you're in the US to know about these things, kind of do your own research, watch these kinds of videos, and you know what not to buy, what not to be around, and what not to give your family to get these cancer-causing chemicals that are banned in over 100 countries, like he said. Banned in over 100 countries. And on the previous one, when they said China banned it, but we still have it here. <sighs> let, me, let me know your thoughts, please. Let me know your thoughts. Hello and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be watching and reacting to something that was suggested to me multiple times throughout a couple of videos that I did regarding food and the comparisons of food between the US and Europe, between the US and the UK, and the restrictions, the chemicals that are in there, and just crazy foods. This video is foods that are banned in Europe. There were two specific videos that I got these suggestions for that I reacted to. It was comparing McDonald's and KFC. Two different videos between the US and the UK. And there are some pretty big differences, you know, between of course the calories, the size was a huge one. And the biggest thing to me, and I complained multiple times throughout the video was the ingredients or chemicals within the food. The fries, for example, had a list of 30 ingredients about in the US compared to in the UK, it was, you know, potato, salt, some oil. I mean, it was very basic stuff. So that's where this video comes in. And this is going to be perfect to answer all of those questions. We all have them. I'm going to get them answered now and see what the difference is between them. What's common here that maybe I eat on a almost daily basis that is banned and why it's banned in Europe and I'm sure the UK. Let's jump into it and let's get scared together for my health and my fellow citizens. Hit it, Simon. Just before we get started, some of you might know that I have another channel called Mega Projects, which is all about mega projects. If you don't subscribe to that, please do. Well, by mm. popular demand, I wanted to cover some things on that channel that weren't quite mega enough for it. So I present to you a new channel called Side Projects, which is no Just longer kidding. that new, but hey, here we are. It covers secret Soviet space weapons. There's probably banned stuff in what I'm drinking right there too. We'll, f we'll find out. We'll see if I make it past the age of 50. The European Union is as suspicious as ever when it comes to foodstuffs containing chemicals, unnatural dyes, and meat treated with synthetic growth hormones. Since 1981, the EU has had stringent rules for the importation of food to its markets, and those rules have only gotten stricter with time. In 1989, it banned as many as six growth hormones, launching a trade dispute which has lasted 30 years and counting. In 2003, it permanently banned one synthetic growth hormone while provisionally banning five others, and a whole host of dyes, chemicals, and preservatives are persona non grata in the EU as well. From hard-shelled candy delights, milk, dyed salmon, and beef and pork treated with all kinds of hormones, here are 10 foods banned in parts of the European Union that are not banned in the United States. Fun, fun. Here we go. Here we go. Number 10. Skittles. While not banned in the entire EU, Skittles are banned in Sweden and Norway for containing yellow dye number 5 and 6. In most parts of the EU, all that's required of the Wrigley Company, a division of Mars Inc., is to include a disclaimer suggesting that the candy could cause adverse health effects and hyperactivity. Still, it's hmm. thought that these dyes can cause allergic reactions in some people, and FDA tests have shown that red dye 40, yellow 5, and yellow 6 all contain cancer-causing agents like benzodine and 4 amino biphenyl and the levels released in Yikes. the body could be much higher than the FDA is reporting, thanks to the fact that routine tests tend to find less of these cancer-causing carcinogens than when they actually pass through the colon. Still, we've never heard of anyone in the US being hospitalized after eating Skittles, but maybe that's just what they want you to think. Number nine. It's because it will hit you way later on in life. They just kind of <laughs> go through your body and build up. It's cancer-causing materials for the future. It's not like you're gonna have Skittles and then within a day or a week or a year or a couple of years, really, that you'll, boom, have cancer because you ate these 
these chemicals. I've had plenty of Skittles when I was younger. I, I don't eat that candy anymore. It's too much for me nowadays. Too much sugar, too much fake sugar. Even in my chocolates, which is a video that I'm going to do, much difference, uh, much difference. Bigger difference between, bigger difference? There's quite a big difference between the US chocolate and pretty much everything in the UK and Europe, and I'm sure many other places. That's just one example that I can't just have our normal chocolates anymore. RBGH or RBST milk. The main reason cited by the European Union for banning both recombinant bovine growth hormone and its synthetic counterpart, recombinant bovine soma metropin, RBST, officially is due to animal cruelty concerns, but there may be other adverse okay. health effects linked to the use of these hormones. Both RBGH and RBST have been tenuously linked to the developments of certain cancers. In addition to that, the FDA found that further study would have to be conducted to determine the impact these hormones would have on the liver and other organs. But in addition to the potential adverse health effects of RBGH in humans, cattle treated with the growth hormone are more likely to come down with a nasty case of mastitis, an inflammatory reaction in the outer tissue caused by infection from microorganisms. As a result of this disease, cattle in the US are treated with antibiotics, eliminating mastocyst infections, but potentially causing other problems further down the line. Although the World Health Organization is primarily concerned about the over-reliance and overuse of antibiotics in humans, claiming that this could lead to the evolution of a superbug, 90% of antibiotics consumed aren't taken by humans. They're fed to otherwise healthy animals. Hmm. And experts warn that this could lead to our livestock essentially becoming superbug factories. As the bacteria they harbor become more and more resistant to antibiotics, it's only a matter of time before these traits get passed on to bacteria that are harmful to humans. Number hmm. eight, papaya. Seems like a reasonable enough theory to me. It's kind of scary in a way. Kind of crazy what we do to other, you know, animals. It's like, yeah, we won't have them, but you just give it to other animals and it's just crazy, 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 crazy. The things behind the scenes you just turn a blind eye to. Uh, corn and soy. The genetically modified organisms or GMOs used in vegetables and fruits in the US have allegedly been linked to some nasty health problems. However, whether this is actually the case, we just don't know. While it is true that the US treats its produce and fruit with GMOs to make them more resistant to different diseases, and this can be largely beneficial, more research does need to be conducted in order to determine which of these is harmful to humans. Unlike the US and the FDA, right. the EU takes a far more cautious approach when it comes to approving GMOs, meaning that they must pass rigorous tests and environmental monitoring before they are deemed safe for consumption by citizens in their countries. However, even their system is not perfect. Recently, a batch of GMO-treated papaya began circulating through EU-controlled markets. The culprits appear to be farmers in Thailand who mass-produced GMO-treated crops. Number seven, hmm. breads contain- GMOs here are such a big thing. Our, our vegetables, our fruits, everything is just so plump, so perfect, so big. You know, even, even my, my mom from back in the day said, you know, you'd get strawberries only a specific time of the year, since they're natural, they'd be small, there's blemishes in them, and comparing them to nowadays, they're, they're huge. They're like really big strawberries now, big and plump, fantastic. But I feel like since they kind of grew so big, the flavor's not as condensed in the smaller strawberry, and the smaller ones are actually better tasting. Our fruit here is huge and unblemished. Really plump, very shiny. Containing azodicarbonamide. Azodicarbonamide, ADA for short, is a chemical used to bleach breads in order to increase their shelf life. Recently, companies like Subway, McDonald's, and other fast food restaurants have come under fire for using this chemical. ADA is also the chemical that allows bubbles to form inside foams and plastics like vinyl. The EU banned ADA because of its potential harmful effects on human health. Both potassium bromate, a chemical used in bread that helps it rise in the oven, and mm. ADA have been linked to kidney and thyroid cancers in rats. So if China, Brazil, and the European Union have all banned the use of this chemical in their breads, well, why haven't the US? The fact of the matter is that the wow. FDA just doesn't think it's dangerous. After multiple studies, it's ruled that it's not harmful in humans. The question you have to ask yourself is, well, which research do you trust more, and why? Number six, chlorine water. Even the fact that China has it banned should make us think over here in the US, in the Western world. And can't the FDA do, you know, comparisons between the two? Yeah, look at their study, look at our study, compare them. I'm sure they do that. Man, that must be in so much food that we eat though. Us Americans eat 
the FDA kind of shrugs it off. Of course, companies will use that to enhance, expand the shelf life, and in the long run, make more profit because it's all about money. Just wild. I think I had bread today. Oh dear. Wash chicken. Chlorine plays many roles in the industrialized world. It's a powerful tool mm -hmm. for cleaning water supplies, which otherwise might become yep, yep. contaminated and lead to the development of cholera when ingested, a disease which is extremely fatal if left untreated. But it's also used to clean other things, like chicken. Chlorine washed chicken means just that, chicken that's been washed with chlorinated water. According to most websites devoted to chicken and all things related to chicken, it's the internet, of course these websites exist, chlorine washing is a food safety practice which which helps keep harmful bacteria from growing on poultry. But while the EU doesn't think that washing your poultry in chlorinated water will lead to adverse health effects, they do think it's a method of covering up poor hygiene practices. This understandably has made US exporters incredibly angry as it's a decision not based in scientific evidence, but rather on paranoia. Number five, instant mashed potatoes. While the FDA will argue- What do you think of that? I wouldn't be overly surprised if that is true. I know we have chlorine in our drinking water here. I mean, they use a lot of stuff. That would be a video on its own. What, What is in our drinking water here, especially, you know, LA County? Do I get LA County water? My county borders LA and we might have LA water. I don't know where I'm going with this. Let's, let's continue. Otherwise, the preservatives butylated hydroxyanazole, BHA, and butylated hydroxytololine found in instant mashed potatoes, and pretty much every single packaged food you buy in the US, have been known oh, no. to cause some cancers in rats. They're also known to impair blood clotting mm. when consumed in high quantities, among other symptoms like hyperactivity. BHA and BHT are used primarily to prevent foods from excreting oils. This prevents them from going rancid and extending their shelf life. And you can probably guess what the yeah. European Union did about this. If you guessed mm -hmm. that they outright banned them, then congratulations, <laughs> yes. correct. I've had, especially during college, lots of frozen food, packaged food like this. Everything comes down to shelf life. How long can we have these looking great for the longest amount of time to make more money? It comes down to that every single time. That's crazy. And I would like to know what the U.S. had banned that they overturned or didn't have banned that they, they uh, overturned. And then the same thing with the EU or the U.K. What in the U.S. did they ban originally? And they found out, yeah, it's not that bad. Let's, let's allow it now. Or it's safe enough now or they changed something. That would be interesting to know. The big industry, you can get anything, any meal frozen here. Frozen pizzas, huge thing. And that has bread. I bet that has multiple layers of this bad stuff in it. And it has milk products, of course, cheese. Woo, frozen pizzas, gotta watch out for them. The strange thing about the situation is that the FDA admits that BHA and BHD are probably a bit carcinogenic in nature. The FDA certified these food additives as GRAs, generally recognized as safe, but this just means that they're only regarded as safe up until a certain amount is consumed and never underwent pre-market review. Number four, Mountain Dew. You might be surprised to learn that your favorite lemon-lime soda mm. may contain a chemical typically used in a flame retardant, and this is an ingredient that has been banned in over 100 countries. The FDA tested the ingredients in Mountain Dew and found that they lacked enough conclusive data on one of its main ingredients, of brominated course. vegetable oil, to decide whether or not it was safe to consume, although it's still labeled as GRAS. Of course, across the pond, it's a different story. Because it competes with iodine for receptor sites in the body, high levels of brominated vegetable oil in humans can lead to thyroid problems, autoimmune diseases, and potentially cancer. In fact, bromine is considered a toxin. Mm -hmm. Although brominated vegetable oil Bromine, that was in the water video, Dasani video. Pretty much why they don't sell Dasani in the UK anymore. What happened? And just lie after lie that the company, the Coca-Cola company did to get their bottled water out there at first was success. Then it all went downhill real fast. I think in two weeks it was found out. The stark difference between our two countries, like, yes, it's bad for you. It, there's these bad chemicals in it, not good for humans, cancer causing, tested them with rats. Let's put it in our food products, our Mountain Dew, and sell it to the public, and eh, we'll, see what we, we'll see what we find out. We'll test the people later on when they're older is still legal in the United States, Pepsi and Coke decided to remove the ingredient from their soft drinks after public yes. backlash. Number three, yes. farmed salmon. Probably thanks to the UK. Like that was, uh, I should look up when they removed it. It could have been that video, the Dasani video that I mentioned, could have been like a wave that came over here and 
after a couple more years, they're like, okay, yeah, it's like too out of control. European, UK consumers will back off of our Coca-Cola products altogether. That's crazy. Salmon has all kinds of health benefits, but people consuming anything other than fresh water or organic salmon might be consuming a harmful carcinogen. The European Union mm -hmm. has outright banned farm-raised salmon for good reason. So what exactly that's, that's separates farmed salmon from freshwater salmon? Well, that's the fact that salmon that are raised on farms are typically fed an unnatural diet of grain, antibiotics, and other drugs that leave their meat an unhealthy looking gray. Propagators of farm-raised salmon use a chemical known as astaxanthin to dye the unhealthy gray away. You're probably guessing, Astaxanthin has been banned in the EU due to health concerns, and you'd be right. What's more is that freshwater salmon growing up on natural food sources retains a vibrant pink quality. Number two, US pork. Costco sells a lot of salmon that's farm fed, and we have it, you know, every other week. And to be as realistic as I can, I'm sure we get that farm fed salmon that's because it's it's not as red and kind of, I don't know, vibrant's the right word. It is kind of more faded pink bit of a faded salmon color, but you could definitely tell the difference between real fake, real fake. Next time I'm there, look at the back of the package and see if I could find these things. Maybe I'll take a picture of it and be like, hey, I just took a live picture of this at Costco and I'm gonna post it to the little community tab where I could post pictures and polls. Mark my words. Pigs in the United States are typically given food laced with ractopamine, a growth promotion drug which helps animals remain lean. The drug basically mimics the effects of stress hormones, allowing for the production of more meat while keeping feed consumption relatively low. So what might be the problem with this? Well, the company that produces the drug, Elanco, did their own testing on the drug, and this might be a decent indicator that some corners might have been cut. Shortly after the FDA approved the drug for use in American pork products, farmers began reporting that more and more pigs became non-ambulatory which is a fancy way of saying that they can't stand or walk. These pigs tend to get treated very poorly in U.S. slaughterhouses, getting trampled and dragged by workers and mm. electrically shocked by cattle prods in a cruel effort to get them moving again. More than 218,000 pigs are recorded as having this condition. The FDA accused Elanco of withholding information. But despite this news, the drug is still allowed in the U.S. All that's changed is a big old disclaimer listing the drug's side effects. On this one, we can't really blame the EU for banning it. Sometimes being cautious pays off. Number one. Yeah. USB. It's better how the EU and I'm sure the UK does it. Be cautious first and then ease into it. Do your research. Don't don't do a don't do a study and then say, yeah, it's fine after one study or a couple studies. Give it a few years. Like we have time. We're on this earth for quite a while. Whatever the study says, just take your time with it. The US goes headfirst into these things, does some studies, calls it a day. I like the cautious approach more. Of course. Beef. Much like the EU's reasoning on banning US sourced milk, meat sourced from cattle raised on growth hormones cannot be imported to the European Union. Believe it or not, this decision has resulted yeah. in a long standing trade dispute between the US and the EU, lasting 30 years and counting. Unlike Ooh. milk, however, the ban on US beef extends to six different growth hormones, with estradiol being permanently banned and five others provisionally banned. This has resulted in US retaliation in the form of tariffs on selected food imports from the EU, an action that the EU is heavily criticized. Not all US beef is banned in the EU, though. Just recently, a deal was reached to allow a certain market share for companies looking to export organic beef, but the tariffs do remain. The US claims okay. that the EU's decision is not based on scientific evidence and that they're not treating farms that use synthetic growth hormones fairly. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please I did. do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching. Yes, if you like that, don't forget to subscribe. To him as well, to him. That's what we're talking about. But me, if you enjoyed the video and you're still here, if you made it to the end, congratulations. Thank you. Because I thought that was a really... Living here, it's crazy to hear it. And then if you're out of the country knowing that another country is eating all this stuff, but you're safe, that must be incredibly entertaining as well. Like very enlightening and puts you at ease on the other side of things. Let me change this. There we go. Much better. That was a great video. Like from me, absolutely. Simon, you did it again. Top 10s as a channel. This guy is one of my favorite YouTubers, actually. This reminds me of a video that I have saved that I have not done yet. Let me inch over here. That I've not done yet. And it's probably, this is probably a part of it, talking about how other countries treat their citizens better than the US treats their citizens, something along those lines. And I bet this is a part of it. So thank you for the suggestions, first off. This was good. There's one other video that's the same, and I wanna see if they have different 
items. But let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel about this. Most of my audience is outside of the US. Most are in the UK. And I want to know your thoughts of this. Maybe my government, the FDA, the people here, but then how you feel being more protected than we are here. The government's looking, they're more strict, thankfully, with their food, what they let in until they have substantial amount of evidence that no, it won't harm the citizens. And even then they're still cautious, which I think is fine. And the difference is if you know between the UK and Europe, which one's more strict? I'd almost wanna guess Europe is, but of course the UK is probably right behind them. Maybe they're more strict, I'm not sure. So thanks for watching, thanks for making it to the end, and I'm going to try to find more food videos to do. That other one that's similar to this one, British foods, foods in the UK, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I found, I think, two or three videos dealing with that, and that'll be good. It has a reputation there that I don't agree with. I personally liked the food when I was in London at least, but it's, you know, this massive melting pot of the world live in London specifically. And even when, when I was younger in Ireland, Scotland, I enjoyed the food there. I, I had no complaints at all. It was good. It was different from here. And as you could tell, it's safer and healthier. So thanks for joining. And until next time, have a good, healthy rest of your day.